It's kind of like uh, the line at the grocery store, the express line, 15 items only. <laughs> Uh, so next up we have another video. This is from Red Hat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Wright. That is an awesome video. Uh, I, I just have to say I love seeing open source and community collaboration having that kind of an impact on the industry. Uh, I'm Chris Wright, a Chief Technologist at Red Hat. And uh, looking at OpenStack and in this, this journey that's not even six years old, we've gone from just an initial nascent technology project to something that's having significant impact on the industry. Two years ago, uh, the foundation's gathering data from the OpenStack user survey. Two years ago, uh, the respondents said a third of them were putting their OpenStack deployments into production. Fast forward two years to today, and we see 65% of the respondents putting their OpenStack uh, deployments into production. 2x improvement in two years. That steady growth is showing OpenStack maturing to production. So here's a little logo eye candy, uh, just, just showing you a, a small cross-section of our customers who are deploying OpenStack in production today. We're serving hundreds of customers who are putting their deployments uh, into production. And what I find most compelling about, about this collection of, of examples and our customers is the diverse set of not just companies, but industry verticals and specific use cases that they're attacking with OpenStack. Uh, it's, it's this diversity that's, that's showing not just kind of the test and dev and non-production workloads uh, that we saw earlier in the adoption phase of OpenStack, but, but these companies are taking OpenStack to production and solving real business critical problems, putting, putting, things, uh, putting this infrastructure to use improving their businesses. So let's take a look at one of those, uh, FICO. You may, have, you may be familiar with FICO. Hopefully, you, you got the loan. I, I don't know. My, the, the credit score company is usually what springs to mind for me when I think of FICO. Uh, but, but FICO is a, a, a business analytics company uh, providing uh, software that helps companies make intelligent decisions. For years, they've been taking their products to their customers as an on-premise solution, making it accessible really to, to larger organizations, trying to solve uh, problems about risk, uh, fighting fraud, and generally making better business decisions. In order for them to bring this same technology or these same solutions to a broader market, 
they adopted an as-a-service model and moved their products to, to being available as a service. And in that transition, they've made their software available to SMBs and mid-market uh, organizations using a cloud built together with Red Hat on, on OpenStack and Ceph. And with that cloud infrastructure, uh, FICO has been able to improve the speed at which they can introduce uh, their analytics solutions, uh, reducing the time to market for them by, by 50%. In addition to that, this new infrastructure has saved them 30% in, in cost. On, on top of this infrastructure, they've added a PaaS system uh, built on OpenShift. And with that PaaS system, they are uh, enabling their customers to build analytics solutions and deploy them rapidly, reducing their customers' time to value by 70%. So this is goodness, right? This is faster, cheaper revenue from new markets. Betfair is one of the largest uh, industries uh, online uh, betting systems, as well as the largest uh, betting exchange system. Betfair has re recently introduced a, a cloud to their environment as part of the i2 program, enabling uh, their applications, or tr they're trying to enable continuous delivery for their applications, including hundreds of microservices. Uh, these applications are, are being built and delivered on top of OpenStack and impacting millions of users a day. So that's us. That's this community right here collaborating, delivering real, real value to, to users and, I guess, entertainment. It's not for investment purposes. Entertainment for, uh, for, the, for the world at large. NFV is a fundamental transformation of the network. Uh, this is the, uh, a, sort of a once-in-a-decade type of opportunity for the industry to retool itself around new technologies. Uh, Verizon has started on this process of retooling their infrastructure uh, just about nine months ago, where they went from early conception to a rollout of OpenStack cloud deployments across five U.S. data centers and intention to continue to grow. We work together with our partners, uh, Dell and Big Switch, to build a, uh, a new network gener uh, next generation network fabric that is simple, high bandwidth, secure, flexible, and allowing them to, to build out their network services and functionality. I'd like to invite Chris Emmons on stage with me to tell us a little more about what Verizon is doing with OpenStack. So I gave the thumbnail sketch, but what, what are you really doing? What are you doing at, at Verizon with, with OpenStack? Yeah, what we're really doing is, uh, is laying the foundation for the next generation of Verizon's network, um, you know, based on uh, open source software and commodity-based hardware. On top of that, we're automating everything. We're virtualizing all our uh, applications and, and software defining the network around that with the, the ultimate goal of you know, making our network 100% programmable so we can you know, drive down cost, increase uh, operational efficiency, and, and really uh, drive time to market. So you're fundamentally changing your business. So that's, that's what I hear. Yep. Um, now, now, why OpenStack? What drove you to OpenStack and open source? Um, we, well, as I said, we wanted a one of our foundational concepts here was we wanted open source to drive innovation, to drive uh, competition, uh, you know, to achieve the goals of the program at large. Um, OpenStack has the, you know, the, the maturity today to deploy and satisfy the needs of our infrastructure today. And you know, seeing the size of the community here, it has the, uh, the gravity and the mass and the, and the momentum to really get to where we need it to be to enable the functions of the future. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. So all of these production deployments started with upstream development activities, whether it's triple O heat templates or core IPv6 functionality added to OpenStack. Uh, th this is work that starts upstream. Red Hat as a vendor represents our customers, and we work with our partners to define use cases. We bring those to the community in the form of blueprints and code. As community members, we work with our community peers to merge these, uh, this functionality into the code base and, and to evolve it and improve it and, and really bring this to 
ultimately deliver this downstream value to, to customers to make real world impact on, on business. If you, if you step back for a moment and look at the, the few examples that I showed, one thing that strikes me is that diversity that I mentioned earlier. And it's diversity that really matters here in a couple of different dimensions. One, it's industry verticals, it's use cases, it's helping us sort of grow and stretch what OpenStack is capable of. And it's that pressure on OpenStack that actually gives it the, the longevity that we're expecting to, to see with this community that we're building together. The ability to uh, add new functionality requires architectural shifts so that you can ingest this, these changes and maintain them long term. Of course, diversity is not just about the code and functionality and use cases, but it's also about the actual community itself. Uh, so you know, embracing a diverse set of community members across uh, gender, race, sexuality, age, et cetera, this is really critical to the long-term sustainability of the community itself. This community is made up of individual human beings, like you and me. We're building direct individual trust relationships with one another. And it's those relationships, it's that fabric that, that builds this community and, and is what will make it strong and make it sustain itself into the future as we're exploring new ways to, uh, to define what a cloud is. So what is OpenStack? Uh, OpenStack today is something that's, that's maturing into a, a wide variety of, of production environments. It's a, it's a large number of individual projects. It's a huge community collaborating around those projects, defining what is next generation cloud and infrastructure. Uh, OpenStack is, all, uh, the community is always evolving its definition. So we've gone from core to integrated, we've got Def Core, we've got Big Tent, we've got TC badging, all these efforts to help define what is OpenStack. We have a great opportunity here to work together as a community through our collective experience, uh, defining just exactly what OpenStack is through things like uh, triple O heat templates or playbooks, or more generally, the deployment uh, patterns that we see today and we know today, that is OpenStack. OpenStack in the future, OpenStack in the future is whatever we can expand into. It's the communities that we can attract, the users, the developers, it's the external uh, parts of our industry that we're collaborating with. I was just recently at the uh, Collaboration Summit, and it was hard to miss the number of in uh, industry peers that are looking to collaborate with us, whether it's OPNFB, bringing us NFB uh, use cases in code, or whether it's the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, looking at the world through the eyes of the modern application developer. These are communities that are looking to collaborate with us, help us define what is OpenStack. OpenStack is next generation cloud infrastructure, and it's a place for the industry to collaborate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris.